It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk a little bit more about WireGuard. Now I've done some WireGuard videos over the last few weeks, some for businesses, some for personal use. It's really just an amazing VPN tool and one of the things that I love about Windows and Mac, which is a weird thing for you to hear me say, is that they usually get a really nice graphical user interface for any tools that you use and unfortunately Linux a lot of times kind of gets left behind companies say, you know what, we have Linux support, and then they tell you, yeah, it's in the terminal. Yeah, it's in the terminal. Yeah, it's in the terminal. Well, it's in the terminal. And then you go look at Windows or Mac, and you see that they've got support for them, and they've got this really nice little graphical user interface that makes it super easy to use whatever the, whatever the application is that they've got. Meanwhile, over in Linux, we're having to learn all these commands and command line stuff to get things done. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. As a person who loves Linux, I don't mind the command line. I really don't, but it's really nice once in a while to see a nice graphical user interface come along. When I first started using WireGuard a couple of years ago when I covered it on my channel, I was frustrated by this same problem where it was always in the command line, but then I noticed on my iPad and on my Mac, I had WireGuard applications that were nice little graphical applications that made it really easy to just open up and connect to a network. I didn't have to go digging through my Etsy Wire or Etsy WireGuard folder and figure out what the configuration file was called to get WG Quick to connect to it. It, it just let me click on it. So I started building a graphical user interface back then that was really made with JavaScript, HTML, and then I used a really cool project called Neutralino JS to basically make it an installable application that you could then run on your desktop. And I had a few people go get it and try it out, and I had a little bit of capability with it to import uh, you know, files and things like that. And funny enough, I originally called it Wire, G-U-I-R-D, just like this one. Now this is not my project. This is a separate project out there on GitHub that someone has created that is just awesome. Now, you can see it hasn't really been messed with in a while. 11 months, 14 or 14 months, 2 years, 13 months. Um so it's been a little while since they've done anything to it. It could be just that they didn't get any attention on it, but honestly, I grabbed this thing. It's got a .deb so you can grab it for your Ubuntu or your Debian system and go and install it and see how it runs for you, but I mean, for me it's running great. I've got two different systems set up here. All I got to do is pick the one that I want and then click on this button right here and it attaches me right to that WireGuard interface. And now I'm connected to this WireGuard network and I can do the things that I need to do. It, it's really super terrific and very simple to use. When you're done, click on deactivate and you're, and you're out. Switch networks, click activate. You can even be on an active network, click another network, click activate and it switches for you. So I mean, very, very, very cool that this thing functions as well as it does. You can import profiles. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff with this graphical user interface. So you can click on Add Tunnel right here. It just gives you your file explorer. You can go find your configuration files, add them to the tunnel, and it really does all of the work for you. It's a very simple, very straightforward interface, but it's really nice to have this. And the nice thing is, whenever you've got your, your taskbar, it creates a little tray icon. So when I click close, it doesn't actually close. It just sits down in their tray and I can open it back up whenever I need to. It's a really cool application. So I'll have the links for GitHub on the, sh on the show notes in the description. Now, of course, you can just compile it yourself. You don't have to compile it, you know, you don't have to actually use a .deb, but that's what he's got packaged at this point. So that's what I'm using because I'm fortunate enough to be on a Ubuntu system. Uh, just because you're not, don't, don't, mean, don't think that means that you shouldn't try this out, though. Another thing you guys can do is get out here, add some stars to this thing. Let these guys that started this project know that you like this project. Maybe they'll come back and do a little bit of work on it, clean it up. Um, always worth a try at, at the very least, but I really like this. It functions really well. I've been looking for something like this. I don't know why it took me so long to find this one, but it's really, really great. And I thought I'd kind of bring it up and let you guys look at it. So I want to go through the install of it real quick. It's not hard. So I'm going to jump over to my 
desktop on another machine that I've got set up because obviously it's already installed on this one that I'm on. But we'll open up the Firefox browser here. Of course, open up any browser you want to. So once you get here, you can just download it directly, I believe. Yeah, he's got a download link right here. He says 1804, 2004, 2204, which is awesome. I would like to repack this as an app image to see if it would work on other systems, though. But I'm going to download this deb. It's very small. It doesn't take any time. And then we'll just open up a console. And I'll make that full screen. The font size on this thing. We're going to go into our downloads folder. And we can see right here is the file that we downloaded. So we'll just clear that out. And we're going to do sudo apt install dot slash wire gird and it's the deb put in our super user password and it's going to go out and look and make sure that it knows that it can get all of the dependencies all right looks like it installed okay now we can actually go search for the application inside of our menu here yep here it is right here and it's always going to prompt you for your super user password because it does have to do some manipulation of your interfaces things like that but there we go it's up and running on my other system now. I could actually import a profile if I had one set up and get connected. It's very quick. It's very simple. It's a really cool application. It's your open source advocate and I'm back and I've set up a store with a little bit of merchandise. I love being your open source advocate, but I want you guys to be the open source advocates with me. So if you want to get out there and get some of this stuff. And if you do, let me know what you think of it. It's really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, Tell your friends about it so they can come along in the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.